This is Come and See with Father Philip Hall, turning to and following Christ in the 21st century. Father Philip is parish priest at All Saints of Lincolnshire Orthodox Church in Lincoln, England. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, God is one. Amen. Begin by reading Galatians chapter 6, verses 11 to 18, and John chapter 3, verses 13 to 17. There can't have been many people in this world over the last few days who have not been thinking about those terrible scenes and terrible happenings of 20 years ago on the 11th of September 2001. I myself remember vividly being told by a PE teacher at the school where I was teaching that an aeroplane had crashed into one of the towers of the World Trade Center and by the time I got home and looked on the television the second aeroplane struck the second tower. Terrible images, two planes, a huge explosion, smoke and fear, horribly falling people some of those people holding hands, then the crumbling tower, a second crumbling tower, hellish dust clouds, people running, and the terrible shocking empty space where the two towers had stood. The next day we saw pictures of the wreckage, the aftermath, those terrible jagged pieces of metal and masonry forming um, a small hill. And amongst all the other really shocking pictures was one of a man he was a Franciscan friar, a priest, called Father Michael Judge, who incidentally did not judge, he forgave. Father Michael being carried lifeless out of, this, out of one of the towers, having been struck on the head by falling masonry. A small hill. All that terrible things. Americans and other people of all types, deeply moving, horrific images that still strike horror into us 20 years later. Images you just see vileness and you wonder what sort of hatred do these people have to cause this destruction? I went to see it some years later. The place then was a building site. They were building those two very moving footprints of the ever descending water into darkness actually. Very moving. They were building it at the time. And I was with Americans of all ages looking down on this building site. And there was a terrible silence amongst us all. People quiet, some people praying, some people making the sign of the cross, some in tears. It was deeply upsetting. What did it all mean? This meaningless destruction, this meaningless killing, this meaningless cruelty, this meaningless hatred, 
what had happened was self-evidently evil. And in some ways that is the answer. Evil robs everything of meaning. It destroys and it kills. Evil sucks out life and light and joy and love and all that is good and pure and joyful and of God. Scenes like this, of course, can be witnessed elsewhere as well. The aftermath of bombings, the natural evil of natural disasters, and tsunamis and earthquakes and volcanoes, and terrible crashes and accidents, conflict, disease. Truly, the world can be seen as a Golgotha, a crucifixion, the world a pile of skulls and the bones of infants and innocent men and women. Golgotha, a cross, but this one a sign of hope, a sign of healing, a sign of mercy, a sign of salvation, a sign of peace, a sign of forgiveness, and above all, a sign of God's great love for his world and for his beloved people each and every one of us. The cross, the glorification and the lifting up of the Son of God, Jesus of Nazareth, the God-man. The terrorists, those poor terrorists, those poor hungry souls who had into their hungry hearts poured hatred and loathing. Those poor men who had been manipulated by others to do this terrible act. They brought death, they brought destruction, they brought fear and hatred. And in the end, they brought meaninglessness. But the cross of Christ, amazingly, and at the time, utterly unexpectedly, brought with it life, creation, peace, love, resurrection and ultimate meaning to the world. The exact opposite. In the events and the destruction of 9-11, we can see and we can think of the 19 terrorists only, flying aeroplanes into buildings filled with people who were just doing their jobs, who were looking after their families, people who were ordinary people, people who were important, <laughs> people who were janitors, people who were cleaners. We see people filled with love for their families, sending messages to those people they loved. I love you. So many messages like that. Deeply affecting and moving. 
And those people on the aeroplanes realising what their end would be, sending their love to their children, to their husbands and wives, making their last moments one of love. Well, we can think of those terrorists and think of only hatred. We can look again and we can see again those men and women and children of every race, 90 different countries, Christians and Muslims, Jews, Buddhists, Hindus, Sikhs, theists, deists, agnostics, atheists, every one of them loved by God, his children, suffering together. We look again and we can see the police and the harbour authorities and the members of the fire department, medics, clergy, nuns, priests, rushing not away but towards the problem, coming to people's aid, hoping to rescue. Look again. And we can see people praying in the crowd, helping, rescuing, opening doors to safety, loving, giving of themselves, aiding those people who are wounded, people stopping and taking the injured to hospital. In short, we can see Christ crucified and resurrected in that scene. We look again, there he is. And with these eyes, the hatred of the terrorists becomes transformed as we notice the love, the self-giving, and the courage, which is the ordinary reaction of every human being. Hatred, evil, can never be defeated by more hatred and more evil. Only love can overcome. Such love as we see demonstrated by our Lord and God and Saviour on his sacred and most precious and most exalted cross. Your prayers. God bless you. Amen. Join us again next time for Come and See with Father Philip Hall, a listener-supported presentation of Ancient Faith Radio.